All right, here we go. We got stand-up dates coming at you live November 16th, New Haven, Connecticut, 17th, Providence, Rhode Island, 18th, Medford, Massachusetts. Mikey and I will be there together. Oh, yeah. December 1st and 2nd, Phoenix, Arizona. Mikey will be there together. Then December 7th and 8th, Salt Lake City. All those shows are sold out. December 9th, Denver, Colorado. Then January, we got San Diego on January 12th and then Los Angeles January 13th and then Nashville, Tennessee and Washington, D.C. and Reno, Nevada all my shows ChrisDComedy.com we're going to have some fun you slut <laughs> Dude, I can't wait to get a lobster roll on that New Fuck England yeah. run that's going to be fantastic where are you going to be? Uh, MikeCannonComedy.com for my dates I'm going to be in Washington, D.C. shoot him in the head that's right electing a new prime minister December 8th and the 9th I'll be at the uh, the comedy loft in Washington, D.C. then December 22nd I'm in Stamford Connecticut at New York Comedy Club. Shout out, Emilio. December 29th and the 30th, closing out the year in Lansing, Michigan, and then Grand Rapids. Dude, you I know, Lansing's the capital is it? of Michigan. Yeah, dude, I, that's a capital I've never been to. You lucky. Oh, dude, it's going to be super fun performing in a yoga studio. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, an, that's an add-on. So namaste. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> namaste. Uh, so come out to that. In January, I'm in Pottstown, Pennsylvania at Soul Joe's. Then I'm doing the, uh, to the Sunshine Comedy Fest. It's like a com new comedy festival in Tampa, January 11th through the 14th, and then more dates coming in. I'm being Chandler, Arizona, which that's the hot spot of entertainment. Go to MikeCannonComedy.com for all those. That's it, baby. Go support live stand-up. We appreciate when the fans come. We really don't have anything without you guys, girls and babies, so please that's come. Right. Buy some merch. Have fun. Enjoy the comedy. It's an hour, an hour and a half where you can just laugh at anything, even when I yell the word Volcano. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to yet another episode of Chrissy Chaos. We keep making it to the next week. It's unbelievable. We keep making it to the next week. I will do this show. I will never stop doing this. Just no, I will never stop doing the show. Even when they put us in the Chinese prison labor camps, <laughs> I will stick to do show. Who's that? That's them. That's, That's China. Them. Hey, hello, That's China. That's China. Welcome, China. <laughs> well, China's at my door because we have a TikTok star on the podcast. <laughs> You're not no. wrong. Yeah. No, 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 no. It's to Trevor Wallace, everybody. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm out here, you know, looking dapper in some corduroy. I uh, showed up late. I feel bad. Dude, I feel like you got to be so hot to show up late. That or a rapper. It or doesn't, a host. It doesn't you. matter. For me, what is time? We've made it up time. That is true. We've made it all up. Arizona doesn't do daylight savings. So who cares? So you're actually an hour early if, if we're in Arizona. I <laughs> run my podcast on Arizona time frames, which they don't <laughs> play by the rules. Trevor Wallace. So it's interesting. I, I brought that up, you know, being silly, Willie, because... We're all stand-up comics, right? And it's this thing that's happening with stand-up comics where someone, and I'm sure this happens to you, someone will notice us in the street and say, oh, you're that guy from TikTok, or I yeah. know you from TikTok, when we have we are stand-up comics, we've done stand-up comedy yeah, yeah, for yeah. years, our bread and butter, our backbone is stand-up comedy, but yet people be like, you know, I used to think, oh, you've deduced me now to a TikTok star, but my thought process has changed. I said, no, no. This is still a good thing because this is the platform they're seeing you on. Where if this was 25 years ago, they may say, "Oh, aren't you the guy from, from that Carson sitcom or, something. Yeah, or yeah, whatever?" Yeah. So, how do you feel about that when you get recognized as as a TikTok guy? First time I got called a uh, TikToker back in public, I was with my girlfriend at the time, and I was embarrassed, you know. But now it's like that's where everybody's at, so that's where it's you right. want to be recognized as. That's the number one app. The worst is when someone's like, "Yo, I know you from Facebook Reels," and you're like, "Where the <laughs> fuck? What are you doing at home? Yes. What basement are you watching?" But I still post on Facebook and and all these other apps just because that's it. You now, know? do you run it, or do you have people who run it, or are you on it? Chinese government, yeah. Chinese government. No, I, I still post all my own stuff just because I feel like I'm pretty specific on how I want it to look. Right. Uh, and then I'll like I'll have somebody else post it, and then like the title is like over my face. And I'm right. Like, Where was the thought process in this? I got. I would say the thing that I got sent the most, like in my friends group chat. Um, I don't know if it's as of recent. Or it was the biggest one. Was your your Trader Joe's parking lot? Yeah, oh, yeah. It was one, like a week and ago. then uh, the chain smokers one. Oh, That's yeah. That's what my boys were, oh, really? were sending around. They were like, my boy actually just two days ago sent me the Trader Joe's parking lot one. He was like, do you know this guy? I was like, never met him. <laughs> no, no, and then I'm gonna send him a picture that's of so me and cool. you like this. Yeah, yeah. That's so cool that I'm in like that 
level of friend oh, yeah, group, dude. you know? Oh, Let's yeah. Because I know, I've, I feel like I could imagine your friends. I feel like what the shit that they would say along with that video would be like, this fucking bitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, well, my friend said, he goes, he goes, do you know this girl? And, <laughs> wow, look at us. Back then, this was two years. It was dude, I fatter there. You were definitely on some D-ball. You were on yeah. something. I was, I was a puffy bitch back then. That was now, look at now. Look at Michael Blaustein. This is Trevor Wallace and Michael Blaustein. I know. The, Cut him off. From the Stiff Socks podcast, um, who they came on our show, Chrissy Chaos. When was this, V? Le uh, about a, a year and a half ago. I've already sold that house and moved out. Really? What, How what? wild is that? I like, What? That was I a beautiful immediately, place. I had just moved in when you guys came in, What what's the date? Two I, years ago. Two years ago. November 16th, November 16th 2021. What? That was a beautiful place. Why did you I move moved? out? Because... I don't, um, I don't want beautiful things. No, I, it's because I didn't like the whole idea of having a house and owning a house. I thought that's what I wanted. Yeah. But then you kind of realize that there's a lot of stuff to do in the house, the backyard, oh the front Oh my God, yeah. yeah. And I was like, you know what? For me, I just, I want to do comedy. I want to be the best I can creatively. I want as little other things to yes, distract me from way. that as possible. So I'm like, I, let me just get an apartment where I could pay a super to do the things that I'm not man enough to do. And it's been a point of contention. I mean, my girl, you know, is obviously furious at me. She's like, we had it all. We had a beautiful house and now we're in an apartment that has roaches. I'm like, boo, yeah. you need to just yeah. relax. It's all about the creativity. It's all about the creativity. I need to walk to work. That's I need so to be able to walk to a bagel store. So okay. that's what, that's how I feel about it. But do you think it was a bad decision for me to sell the house and move to an apartment? Uh, no, because I just did the same thing. Whoa. So I, I got a house, but it's, it's far, it's far out of LA because it's just cheaper out there. Sure. But it's the same thing. I'm there. It's too quiet. There's, I got to make my own like hustle and bustle. I got to make my own creativity. It's far. It's too far. But like now my friends are like, you should just move back into the city. I was like. I just bought this fucking thing. Just all the, the paperwork you got to do going into a house, terrible. Then something breaks, there was a leak. So what the, did you do? So you sold your house already? No, I still have it. But I'm considering being like, this is too much for me. The you don't like the way you feel so far no, in the house. No, I love the house, but it, it's it's just not what a, a, I need right now. It's right. Like, I, I feel like I should be more in the thick of it. But I do work out of there. That's where I record and edit and do all that stuff out of it. So it's great for that. But I do feel like the, the in the city... It's, it's not better. there. Yeah, my, my neighbor rakes the street every morning. There's nothing there. He has dementia. Right, yeah. He, there, it's you, all elderly people out there. Well, see, you should get him on the podcast. <laughs> That's what I'm going to start to do, by the way. V, I also wanted to mention this to you when we were talking before Trevor came on. I want to start to get, if we can look into this, like go to old, like I'm dead serious, like senior citizen homes. And even if we have to bring the podcast in, I want to start talking to the elderly. We as a society... Have 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 we don't talk to old people anymore because death scares us. Where kids back in oh. the day, back in the Dizay in the 1800s, early 1900s, all they would do respecting the elderly was talk to the elderly because that's where you get your wisdom from. So I want to start doing that. Maybe we'll get start a Patreon series or start a, a little sub series in the show called like "You Old as Fuck" or something <laughs> that. So that's a kids, great way to respect them, right? Exactly. Humble them at the same time because it has to be a thing where the kids think it's Liddy or <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know. So we have to call all you the old brand as deals fuck. are Levitra and whatnot, right? You have, yo, you ate boosters in like yeah, yeah, what, yeah. you about to die, some shit like that that the kids. You know, I want New York Nico reposting it. <laughs> so that's what we need to do. But your energy is so great and fast. Have you talked to an elderly person? It's like they're watching a YouTube video on point five. You you gotta speed it up. Speed it up. And speed then speed it up. Would we would we be what would be the best? What would be the best episode ever? And I think what would make this serious and what V, what I really I'm genuinely being serious. What okay. I want you to look for is someone who's very close to dying. I would love <laughs> oh, no. if in the beginning we start out with them and then it goes to the, the end of the episode, like, you pull they're plug. dead. At the <laughs> end, the last moment is they've died in their seat. And and we zoom in on their and they last and they're doing tour dates and they go this weekend I'll be in heaven and then they <laughs> yes, just die yes, yes. the Omaha heaven yes yes, yes. and we scroll but so the but the, I and... I can't be any more serious it's something that because I've been reading so I you know I I got back into reading do you read not really no okay what's no. the reason you don't read it's too boring I fall asleep I lose train of thought so do you listen to audio books or where do you get like how do you I get all my news from Snapchat from Snapchat Snapchat news okay yeah it's not good. It's no, like, are these listen. Laffy Taffy trying to take over? Yeah. Listen, no, I you, need to. I need to read. I need to grow my brain. Okay. I feel very dumb a lot of days. Well, the thing is, so I felt the same. Snapchat news is interesting. You get a little news article, get a titty. Yeah. Why it's not? It's fun. You, and, what's 6 9 up to these days? You know? So what I've 
like I've been trying to read more. I've been trying uh-huh. to just force myself to read more. I got kids, right? So I've been trying to put books all around them. Like not just like people are like, you're crazy for this, but I've been re- I read this book every day. It's called The Daily Dad. It's, you know, parenting book by Ryan Holiday. It's a great book. And don't have to be a dad. Good you can be a mom or a dad or whatever you identify as. But it's a good book because you, you read a page in it every day. And I feel like it like connects like whatever you like. If I think I have like a, a, a an idea that people are like, oh, that's wild. When I start to read and this book talks about the past a lot, you start to be like, no, it's not wild. It's just our society has changed so much. Let me give you an example. I have been, my daughter reads like kids books, like, you know, you know, Doctor Who and all that stuff is great. And I still read it to her. But what I started to do is started reading to her the diary of Anne Frank. Oh. I started to read her about a girl, Anne Frank, who was killed and murdered in the Holocaust a whore. Yeah, at yeah, 12 yeah, yeah. years old. I started reading that book to her because I was like, you think that your life, like, you know, when they say like, you know, like when our parents would be like, you're starving kids in Africa. And they'd be like, Fuck you, mom. I'll eat them. And and so so I was like, that's what's happening to my daughter a little bit. Yeah. I said, let me see if I can connect her uh-huh. to a girl not much older, you know, about her age, who like had a tragic fucking ending. And then I've been reading it to her. What happened in the ending? Dude, you don't even know. Let's get her on the podcast. Um <laughs> Do you so do you take like a normal book and then slide a page from there and just see if it like breaks it up? Because you can't go straight in, so you gotta ease into it, you know? Oh, you're saying like do I put a, a couple of pages from the diary in there just to it's right. normal, 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 and they're coming. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're saying like a page of Doctor Who, yes, it's like yes, a poem. Yes, 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 yeah. And then bang, gas yeah, 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 chamber. Yeah, yeah. Um <laughs> Correct. No, I, I I could do that, but what I what I've done it, what what I've reading it to and what I've What's been good is there's a couple of girls that Anne Frank is writing about in her diary mm. that have the same names as some of my daughter's friends in school. Oh, so ooh. she's like connecting it, you know, to like, oh, oh my friend Mary is, oh, Mary is from school and Mary's. In, and then my, she's been asking, like, is Mary going to get this, the Mary who exists today, is she going to get put in the gas chamber? And I'm like, if she doesn't eat her vegetables. Oh. And no, <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but, but, but she, that was just a joke. But hey, I'm Jewish. You got the pass. There it is. Are you? Yeah. Yeah. Get yeah. My in. mom, mom's Jewish. Dad's a Christian. What What I was reading today, actually, in the book, The Daily Dad, which is like, oh, that's why it's good to read it. Like reinforces. He says, you know, it used to be kids were reading books all the time, books that were way too advanced for them because yeah. that was back then, hundred plus years ago, society's way of getting kids resilient and getting kids ready for the future was basically putting them in situations that they're too young for. And then they grow up oh. quicker. Where now we're all about being protective. They can't hear that. They can't curse. It's yeah. like a flip in society. I don't even know what books I read in school anymore. They get so many books get pulled off the shelves because of it doesn't fit the modern day tone of like what's right and what's yeah. wrong. Because a lot of them have like very racial tones under or the same yeah. words you shouldn't say. So I don't even know what books are reading anymore. Honestly, Captain Underpants? I feel like I don't fucking know. With the way school is these days, I feel like I would just show my kids, if I was a teacher, I would just show them the first scene of Saving Private Ryan and be like, this is what happens in a shooting. This is how you have to fucking <laughs> crawl out, just fucking so just, and sorry. We'll think about editing that out. Um, or maybe make it a clip. You never know. And so I know, well, the books that they read now, the books that they, the books that they read now are like, um, they do read a lot about, like revisionist history about like, you know, how bad certain fa- factor of figures in history were. But thank God my kids have a dad like me where I tell them, listen, I take them. I We we sit on the steps of the Capitol and I tell them the truth. <laughs> and, Your father was here January 5th, bright and early, just waiting for the next yeah, day. Yeah, just waiting. But do you want kids or no? I do want kids. I want a family. Yeah. You do? I, yeah, of course. Yeah. A big Jewish family. A big Jewish family. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, there's nothing sadder than being like 40, be like, oh, I got to hit my spots in town and I got to, and then you're just eating just fondue on a cheese plate by yourself. And you're like, what is yeah. this for? Yeah. Why, what's my, well, how old are you? 30. 30. Okay. So now I had my first kid at 30. Okay. 30 is a good, yeah. Don't Manifesting. Po- Woo. Are you married? No, I got nothing. Oh, you don't even have a girlfriend? No. Oh, I thought you had a GF. I used to. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bye, bitch. <laughs> She's a nice lady. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't yeah, mean that. I don't know who she is. I don't have that. So okay. now, <laughs> now I'm just like on some dumbass like Gary V. Like just work and you'll figure out life first. And yeah, I, it's stupid. For what? It's, everything's great and I'm I love where I'm at career wise. Uh, but then it's like Sunday night at like 8 p.m. and I'm like, what is this for? Yes. So and it's interesting. So that's another probably motivating factor why you want to sell the house and get back to an apartment. <laughs> Is because yeah. you know why do you want to be out there alone if you don't have a family? I had a I have a full family and I decided to move them back to the apartment. That's why my girls pissed. Yeah. If I was alone, nobody would be questioning. And that was this. a nice house. Yeah, it was. See, when you said you moved back to an apartment, I wasn't gonna ask too many follow-up questions. I was like, did they break up? Did they split? No, better than no. ever. Well, I'm saying no right now. <laughs> Talk to me again in 15 minutes. <laughs> okay. I'll okay. check my text. Uh <laughs> so I um I I think when you say by the way Vito has a thing up Chinese influencers are using fake belly button stickers to make their legs look longer. Are you Wait. saying Trevor's a Chinese influencer because he's on TikTok? No. Oh, okay, just, you're just you saying know, Chinese influencers maybe in general. Trend, you know, fake what do you think of that? Fake Chinese to make the, How does it make their legs look longer? Oh, 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 you're misple Oh. You ah. you're raising so you're giving your stomach a little, uh, it's like those shoes that the short guys wear that have like the insoles yes. in it. Mm -hmm. We did an ad read for them. That's a crazy company. You ready for this? Here's things I know. Here's Please. talents I have. I guarantee you, I'm looking at you. I'm looking deep into your eyes. I can't, it's, it, I can't necessarily connect with you right now in the way that I want to. It is coming. I'm just waiting for the coffee in a bag to hit. Coffee in a bag. Baby. Shout out. Slap the bag. <laughs> oh, maybe. Oh, that, that was my bad. That was my Yo, bad. damn. This is my eye for my coffee. <laughs> It's back in my tailgate days. Shout you know? out 787 Coffee, Puerto Rican Coffee. Um, your belly button, you have an innie. Yeah. Yep. I think if you have an Audi, you should be taken outside and put Audi of life. Seriously. <laughs> Audi, good Nazi vehicle. My mom never wanted me to have a German car growing up because of that. Really? Yeah, so I had a Honda my whole life. Maybe I am a Chinese TikToker. You might. You had a Honda your whole life. No, I don't have that anymore. Right. Now, I, I eventually got a BMW, and I was like, hey. Yeah, you're, gotta, like, yeah. you're like, yo, the German thing actually were fucking, they're pretty dope. It's a good uh, deal. Great <laughs> APR, mom. Uh, I had a BMW uh, X5 Sport, and then, ooh. I'm not kidding, two weeks into having it, I was driving on I-95 from New York to Connecticut, and I pressed the Sport button for the first time, get so excited, get ready to little? Rip, engine blew up. No Right way. on I-95. <laughs> and my friend James Debo was sitting in the passenger side. He was like, this isn't good, right? You put it in Sport for another man? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. Only for other men. I think <laughs> I think that majority of us get in shape and and get um dressed nice for other men. You think that it's subconscious for other yeah, women, but I, I believe the majority of it is so other men will be like, that looks dope. I agree. In I high do. school, I had my ears gauged. You know where they put the hole in it? <gasps> really? I did it. Yeah. I can put my pinky through it. Ladies, you what yet? But I, the only reason I did it is because uh, when I was a sophomore in my science class, this guy who was a senior, already a legend, senior taking class with sophomores. He had gauges, played on the football team. He walked in one day late, pumped hand sanitizer on his hands in front of the class, huffed it, and went, sorry, I'm late. And the teacher's like, Ed, sit down. And I was like, that's my guy. That's your guy. And he had gauges. And ever since then, I was like, I need gauges yeah. immediately. Isn't it interesting how like your, our brains convince us yeah. that it's for girls if, if, we're, if you're straight, 100%. if you're straight male. But it's not. It's not about girl. I'm telling you. like, Not one I, girl was like, wow, cool holes in your ear. If, if a girl, if a girl was in here today, I mean, you know, you're trying to be presentable or whatever, but I wouldn't be like, as soon as you walked in, I went like this. <laughs> oh, yeah. really? Just just alpha, like yeah. Yo, yeah, what just is like that? that. Where a woman, I would just be sitting. I wouldn't care because it's like, you know, it's like, what am I going to do? I, I have a family. I'm in a relationship. Like, what am I going to try to fucking talk you to you? You feel intimidated by me? No, not intimidated. I'm just okay. saying, I think as men, like, men, I want yes. you. It's more important for you to think I dress nice and I'm handsome yeah. than a woman because I can't be with the woman anyway. Are you a Because I've signed my life up for an incline <laughs> on the fucking treadmill. <laughs> Are you a big, like, firm handshake guy? Like, when you're meeting somebody else's, like, boyfriend, that's, yeah. like, the firmest handshake a man will ever give you. You know what I do to disarm everybody? If I was going to meet somebody else's boyfriend, I'd kiss that guy on the lips <laughs> softly. Just a tap. That works. Tap. What are you going to yeah. do now? Seriously, if I kissed you on the lips, what are you going to fucking do now? Come. Seriously. <laughs> and I, I would be like this. <laughs> Scoop it. And but what this, is Whoa. that? Or sometimes even chicks will have a big handshake. Like my my uh, cousin, she's a big like firm handshake, and I'm like, what? What is this? Well, I told it's my power I told my my kids started a new school today because we just moved. So that today oh. was day one of a new school. So we're already a month into the school year. So day one of oh, a new. Oh, she's starting a month behind. Like she no, she was in school where we were living on, at the house in Staten Island. Oh, she started school there, but we just recently moved. So she like was in Staten Island and just went missing. 
No. Everybody in the classroom was like, "She got God." She's got. No, we told <laughs> we told her we told her we were moving. We told we told her, uh, you know, she knew we were moving, and and she's pissed because her for her brother they threw like that school he goes to a different school they threw like a party for him and gave oh, him a shit. cake. Aww. And for her they were just like, "Bye." Oh no! They were just like, "See ya." <laughs> Damn. See you later. Today she was like, "Today's my last day. I'll never see you guys again." They were like, "Yeah." We'll see your dad on TikTok and with his bullshit. <laughs> um, so, 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 but anyway, but I told my kids today, like they were genuinely like nervous this morning. Of course, I get it. And they were like, do you have like any advice? And I said, truly, I was like, my advice for the both of you is when you introduce yourself, I said, you two take the initiative. You introduce yourself, say your name. And I said to my daughter, you introduce yourself say your name, shake their kid's hands, and look them directly in the eye. I said, when, uh, uh, little kids, especially, I was like, a, a, a kid in third grade, a kid in eighth grade, you look them in their eye and shake their hands, they're not going to know what hit them. It's all going to be subconscious, but then they're like, oh, these two are in charge. This is biz. I said, so absolutely do that. And then both of my kids walked in in front of their new classes crying. So <laughs> we completely, so I was but like. But they get the attention right but, as they walk yeah. in. Stop the tears and yes. handshakes. Or shake. And you do one of these where you grab the elbow on the other person. Yeah, yeah, like you're holding yeah, a musket. Yeah. That's the big one yeah. right there. Shake I said, right there. Yeah, I said, you better keep looking you in the eye. You said like a presidential tears. candidate right there. Well, because I think that so many times, like you think or we think that we need all these things to be powerful. Like it's like, oh, a how gun. can I be powerful without being straight and white? <laughs> it's it's easy. Just look people in their eye. Yeah. That's what it is. I said, That's what it is. Uh <laughs> God damn. So look, look, look for Trevor. Dude. Look, that's Trevor. Dude. Trevor's dad. Yeah. That's Trevor's dad. No, my dad's the Christian one. Oh, sorry. That's Trevor's mom. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Look, exactly. Trevor's mom. Hello. Uh. <laughs> Pretty accurate. Pretty uh, good. Yeah, baby. Um, so let's just be honest. Whose other podcasts are you doing today? Let's shit on them. Uh, Hannah Burner, Giggly Squad. Gay. <laughs> <laughs> Hannah Burner, powerful handshake. Yeah. I love Hannah Burner. Great claw, great calves. Yeah. Yeah. She had great calves. Power handshake, Hannah Burner. So did you? I got a question. You, you kind of look like her husband. Uh, is that good? Yeah, Des Bishop. Well, you don't well, look like him. He has okay. gray hair. You look like a younger version of him. That's he's got not a great Irish. voice. He does have a great voice. He always wears call map. He always wears suits. Oh, really? Yeah. How do you feel about suit guys? I think if you're a suit guy. I think if you're a suit guy, then always be a suit guy. Yeah, if you're yeah, not yeah. a suit guy and you try to wear a suit, that's stupid. But if he he's you a suit start guy, in the game a suit guy. Be a suit guy. Gotcha. No issues, no issues with the suit guy at all. Yeah. If you're not a suit guy and you try to wear a suit, that's when I think things get out of your element and you're like not, you know? Of course. So okay, so we got Giggly Squad with Hannah Burner. Shout out Hannah Burner. Uh, Who else? Are you garbage tomorrow? The bet. I mean, shout Love out them. The Foley, boys. Kippy, great guys. The boys. Uh just that and then just uh filming something. With Amazon, Amazon, Amazon Prime, uh, November fourteenth, Trevor Wall special. It's called Pterodactyl because I. It, oh, like it's, one. it's on Amazon. Yeah, Amazon, A Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime. Woo, November. Bezos, baby. Yes, Jeffy B. Jeffy B. That's my guy. Dude, Amazon Prime is starting to put out some hitters. They Nate are. Nate, Nate Bargatze Jim. said his career and Jim, Jim Gaffigan, of course. Nate Bargatze. Um, Nate said, you know, he's doing three shows, three sold out shows at Radio City coming up. You just did that. Amazing. Congratulations. That was beautiful. That's awesome. I was waiting for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I was going to wait for the end on the yes. sign-off to do it. Just to um, you. Radio City, and then the next night, there at Madison Square Garden. Let me tell you something. Those two nights back-to-back -back was probably the best weekend of, well, definitely the best weekend of my career. And Radio City, if, if, if it, it's one of those things, where if I'm being honest with you, you feel so connected to the crowd and so... Really? You know, I think us as comics, or I, I certainly do this, like when people are like, oh, when, you know... Either they'll say to you, when do you feel like you're going to make it? Or they'll say, how, do, how does it feel that you made it? And I've never feel like I've made it. Correct. And I don't know how to answer when it's going to feel like when I'm going to make it. But there was a moment 20 minutes into my set at theater at Radio City, at Radio City Music Hall, where I was like, oh, shit, I made it. Yeah. I, I felt that. I felt, I mean, it went away because then the next joke bombed. But I did feel. <laughs> well, that's what happens. You get out of your head yeah, for a yeah. second and you're like, oh, that's a lot of fucking people. Wait, that's too many people. And then you got to snap back into it. I, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I was, what's the biggest venue you've ever done headlining as Trevor Wallace? Headlining, 2000. 2000. Okay, so that's a big boy. Headlining. I, I, I did, but like I've done shows. Well, the I, Chainsmokers video, which we're going to get. Right, but, but it's different when you're not headlining. Correct, yeah. So 2,000 seaters is headlining the biggest. Yes. So Radio City's 5,800, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. The, And this was, of course, my big biggest boy. headlining. Big boy. So 
And then I was truly not nervous. I was putting myself in a zone and, and I was like, I, I felt excited until when they're announcing my name and that we had a curtain. Oh, there was yeah. a curtain that was going to come up and then I was going to walk out. It's announced my name and James Mattern, uh, one of the best MCs, he does like this whole intro. Where he's like, are you ready? Yeah, it's you know, the man with the hour, the man with the power, you know him from Chrissy Chaos. And then like, he went, and then, hey, babe. And then his specials. And then like, the, and he was like, and he was like, I'll ask you one more time. Are you guys ready to see the guy you're here to see? And then the the roar of yeah. the crowd, it like it takes you out of your element. Like a wave where I was like, I literally I went like this. Cause I was like, it's a oh. lot. I was like, now I'm nervous. Like my body was like you the whole other rest of the day was bullshit. Yeah. And I walked out like the first 10 seconds, I walked out like shaking. Uh, same here for the special because you're like, what am I gonna say right now that's gonna match that energy? Because right. they're coming in at 30 and you're like, I'm coming out with an eight level joke. Here. Right, right, so right. You, you, that energy and it goes on for so long. The more you sit in it, you're like, I gotta just get the labs going. Right. At least for me, I got it's like I gotta get into a lab quick just to like lock in. Yeah, yeah. I, I you say something like off the cuff, but <laughs> right, right, right. It was it was pretty insane, amazing. I think we have the same agent or we're with the same agency. Yes. So you know, I don't know what venues you're doing in New York, but Radio City, baby. Could I happen. mean, that's fantastic. I just Why did City not? Winery, and I, I, it was, uh, you know. Radio City Winery. Yeah, it's the same level caliber. But, no, but 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 if you do 2,000 seats in another city, yeah, yeah, New York, you like can always sell more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so where'd you film your special? Austin, Texas. Yeah, at the Woo, Paramount? Paramount. Yeah, you done the Paramount? Yes, I've done the Paramount. It's fucking gorgeous. I love that place. Gorgeous. It's perfect. It's got a nice little overhang. So Radio City, it's just kind of like, it's just flat, and then just like the back, it's like a giant U almost, yeah? Yeah, no, but there's people in the stand. There, oh, there's yeah, people yeah, yeah, yeah. in every level. Right. Like the highest. Did you feel it bounce back to you like crazy? Honestly, because they kept telling me, the people who have done it before me were like, you know, with Radio City and these any big venue, you have to deliver your joke, and then wait a pause for the yeah. laugh to come back. Funny if you wait and it just doesn't come it's, back. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. guys, waiting. Iguanas. Yeah. Nothing? Nah. Zero. And, um, and, uh, and I don't know. I kind of felt like I did wait, but I just, I don't know. I felt like so connected to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and I could, it was one of those shows where like a lot of times, you know, when we're doing our hour on the road or whatever, I don't know how you are, but I'm like, I feel like, Oh, I not that I just want to get it over with, but at like 55 minutes, I'm like, I'll stay up here another 5, 10, and then I'm good to go. With that, I like didn't want the show to end. I was like, yeah. I can just keep going. Yeah, yeah, Did yeah. You feel, do you I feel that way in Austin too, definitely. Yeah. Certain clubs, it's just like, I mean, either you get the light and you're like, oh, I still have this much to go left. They're like uh, Comedy Works in Denver is one of those uh, where you're just, or Madison Comedy on State. Those are just clubs where you're just cranking through your set, but it's like the laughter just kills so much time. So you look down at your set, you get the light, and you're like, I still got another, like, 20 in my head. Right. But the, the special, I did an hour 20 each night, and uh, I did three shows. Uh, Hell, yeah. But we're cutting it down. An hour 20 is crazy. No, I yeah. saw Shane's special was 52, and I was like, that is... Yes. He's setting the bar high. What a great special that was. Ph phenomenal. And it's just bop, bop, bop. It was over before you know it. Shane Gillis, the best. Go, um, uh, go watch his special on Netflix. Crush is amazing. Um <clears throat> Vine. We want to talk about Vine. Vine. Because Vine is just something that was came and it went. It was like literally like you had it. It was like the Chappelle show of apps for video. Right. Popped up, disappeared. People wanted more, but they cut it. Well, people got huge on it and yeah. they only had that and then bang, <clears throat> over. With our apps now, with the TikToks and the YouTubes and all that, do you ever think like, what if they shut those down? What would happen? Well, where where think, my platforms go? Oh, yeah. I'd just be yelling at Washington Park. But I think that <laughs> this was a... Vine was like the beta testing for all social media videos. But now there's every app has like... You can fucking post a video on like Craigslist and, uh, you know. So... It's true. Uh, yeah. You can go viral on Etsy. So I think Vine was like the original kind of... Uh, to see how this works, but now every app has it. So if like if TikTok dies, everyone's going to Instagram. If Instagram dies, everyone's going like there's always a jumping ship to go to. So there's no so now it's all about just diversifying and having your stuff. Yeah, everywhere. I think you just post everywhere. Now also because you're fat, I feel like you're one of the kid, you know, like you're you're 30 years old, I'm 39, you're lit, you're fashion forward, you're you know, corduroy. The, kid, the kids corduroy. I'm seeing everybody with corduroy hats. And now I'm seeing everybody with corduroy shirts. I have a corduroy shirt. I wore Bust it last it week. And I've worn it three times. I wore it three times this week. I got it from Zara. It's green. And corduroy, our guy, the homeless pimp who used to be on the show all the time, he's still with us over at Hey Babe, rocks corduroy all the time, yeah. 12 months a year. It doesn't matter. So what? when did corduroy start to come back? 
Uh, God, I don't even know. It just makes you feel like somebody does care about you. It's got a little bit of warmth, touches on the back of your neck nicely. Right. It feels like when you get that fresh fade on the back. You know when they put the, uh, the I almost said whipped cream, Jesus Christ, but the, the shaving cream, I don't shave my face a lot, clearly. But you know they put that on the back of your neckline right there and they shave it up with a straight blade? It feels like that always when you got a little corduroy. Where'd on. you get that corduroy jacket from? Some thrift store in Madison. Really? Yeah, this is some random. It doesn't fit fully. I got, you know, makes my arms feel long. But I, I just, I'll, I'll pop into a thrift store every once in a while. Uh, you know, it's just, I have no idea. It was 30 bucks. I was like, Hey, sure. Dude. I like, I'm, I'm into quarter. I'm into thrift stores now. I feel like yeah. everything is good. Well, New York ones are crazy. I went to one the other day, just next to the hotel and they were charging for a Ralph Lauren, like old vintage jacket, $800. What hotel? This is this, coming out. This two is weeks, a hotel be Indigo. Hotel Indigo. Hotel Indigo. What room? 704. Could have been there, bitch. Could have been there. Yeah, it's uh, the <laughs> roof is called Mr. Purple. That's the bar up there. You ever been there? Oh, you know Mr. It? Purple. Oh, that's downtown in uh, Battery Park, right? No, that's in. Uh, where's Mr. Lower Purple? Side. Lower East Side. It's that was like a. That, that's like the bar where everybody goes when you're new to New York. From yeah. what I hear, you're like 22. You're an intern, and uh, it was hot. You still like, hope. Ten years ago. Oh, really? Ten years ago, it was really hot. Like, yo, know, ten years ago, that place was so hard to get into. Yeah. One time, me and my friends teamed up. Bought a night at the hotel just so we could get the key card. Yeah. And then we would just pretend we were guests and sneak in past the line. So I could have sold my key card. You could use you should keep that key card because that place the, the line gets wild, but like it's 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 mostly interns now. Did you yeah. go to it? I did. It was yeah, fun? Yeah. It was cool. A lot of guys were in suits. That's it. Mr. Purple is also what I call my penis. <laughs> hey. That's his name. <laughs> um uh, so, but yeah, the thrift stores are just crazy out here because they just they're mark vintage it up. Stores out here. Vintage, they're not thrift right? Stores. You're right. You're right. Right. Like you go to a Salvation Army, it's going to be different out here. Ah, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, prize picks, baby. Daily fantasy sports made right. I love prize picks. It is actually my favorite. It is just you against the numbers instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks. You pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and you watch the winnings roll in. With the basketball season here, you know I love basketball. You can now pick combo projections across football and basketball from the Specials League, a league created specifically for combo projections that includes two or more players from different sports or leagues. For example, LeBron James plus Travis Kelsey at a 10.5 combo of three points made plus receptions. That's fun. I like that. Want to play alongside some of Prize Picks' favorite players like rapper Meek Mill and comedian Andrew Schultz, who we just saw on the street? You can now find community plays under the promos tab of the app to view entries from some of the biggest names in the Prize Picks community each week. Prize Picks even offers a reboot policy so that your entries stay in play even if one of your players gets injured. For football and basketball games, if you have a player who exits the game in the first half and does not return in the second, that player is rebooted. Prize Picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy. Players and stat types that you're selecting highlight your winnings from Prize Picks. How fun and simple the experience of playing the game is. I love it. Right now, all you got to do is go to prizepicks.com slash chaos and use the code chaos for a first deposit match of up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash chaos. Use the code chaos for a first deposit match of up to $100. Daily fantasy sports made easy. Love prize picks. Ship station, baby. Ship it, baby. You can get shipped. The holidays are the busiest time of year. Do not get stuck worrying about shipping orders, please. That's the last thing you need to worry about with everything's going on in the world. Don't worry about your shipping orders. Let ShipStation do the heavy lifting so you or your team can put your time, money, and energy into important things. Whether you're shipping from your house or multiple warehouses or your or your you know, someone you're having an affair with house, it doesn't matter. ShipStation can increase your holiday profitability, okay? You can literally ship from anywhere. You can quickly and easily update crucial order information and reduce errors, okay? What I like about ShipStation is they got free trial, quick setup, and literally ShipStation is one of those things that we've just committed to, and it's just easy. I sh we ship everything. ShipStation's robust automations and reporting make scaling easy. As your business grows, you can save thousands on shipping costs. Industry-leading discounted rates from USPS, UPS, DHL, and Global Post. Get discounts up to 84% off USPS and UPS rates. Over 130,000 companies have scaled their e-commerce business with ShipStation. And 98% of companies that stick with ShipStation for a year become customers for life. 
That's ShipStation.com, promo code CHAOS, and you get a free 60-day trial. You genuinely have nothing to lose. All you have to do is go to ShipStation.com, put in that promo code CHAOS, free 60-day trial. Trevor, we, I, I want to read, I want to start reading books. I want to read books with Trevor. Is I, that a show? I want to read books. Reading with Trevor? I need to read. It looks What's like- What's the a- last book you read? God damn it. Uh, <laughs> what do you do on planes? Oh, uh, uh, edit. That's what I have to do. I just pretend I'm not flying in the air and I just edit videos. And I'm yeah. just like, doo, 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 yeah. doo, doo, doo. and there's turbulence. And I'm like, ah, I got to get these cuts in. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the last book I read is actually when I got at the airport. And and uh, Michael, podcast co-host, recommended it to me. What is it? The- Michael Blaustein, uh, another the- one of your mother's people. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, the, <laughs> the Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. Is that a book? I feel like that's yeah. like entry level. That's like the missionary books. It's like It's a good book, but it's like self motivation but it's like 300 pages of it. After What's like it called? Page 7 I was like I get it. Subtle this this Oh yes, I read that you book. Know that not, uh, Mark Madsen I believe is the author, right? It's got a great cover. He's great yes. that guy. Yes, I saw that at the airport and I was Mark but, Manson. Sorry. But here's the thing is like I have a lot of like social like I get weird about like how I look in public. So if I see somebody like reading that on a plane I'm like do they think I'm a loser? Right. Like, like I don't need to give a fuck. I, I, right. You know? <laughs> like I want to put a book a book sock over it. Like, I want to let people know, like, I don't give a fuck, but also help me mentally. Right. Well, you know what you could do? Because in our podcasting, we're so good with podcasting now, and we're so um, kind of, that's what we do. That's our medium. You could listen to audiobooks. Yeah. That's it. I just started getting into it, so I'm, like, trying to. What are you reading? Oh, uh, I've been reading right now. I love history. So Ooh. right now I'm reading this one book called The British Are Coming, um, which is about, like, 1776. How funny is this, by the way? I'll get to it in a second. I went. I went to, this is how stupid I am. <laughs> I went to Skankfest, of course, which is in Las Vegas, right? Just this past weekend. And the after party was at a strip club. And On so, brand. Right? So, so, so we're in the strip club and the stripper comes up to me and we're all sitting like, you know, we're at the comic section and she comes up to me and she starts, and she sits on my lap. And I was like, no, no, no. I said to me, I was like, listen, I don't, I'm, I'm good. Like, I was like, I know you got to make money, your body, your choice, go make money. I was like, do it. I was like, but I'm just not, I'm not getting a lap. I'm not looking for it. Like I'm just chilling. Yeah. I just want to read. And she was like, she was, and she's still sitting on my lap and I'm like, no, it's like totally cool. And then she gets off. She sits next to me. She's like, what are your interests? Like, just <laughs> tell me your interests. And I said to her, I go colonial American history. And she was like, really? Like what? And I was like the battle of 1776. I was like, um, I was like, I like battles in the year 1776. She's like, really? Like who? I was like, General Howe of the Red Coat Army. I think he's a fascinating character. Um, and she's li- slowly just uh, taking off clothes. Yeah, I'm yeah. like Lightfoot Lee, um, Robert Lee's, uh, who would go on to, you know, command the uh, Confederate Army in the Civil War. His father, um, the Battle of Brooklyn in August of 1776. These are amazing battles that I really like. And she's like, it's so interesting. She's like, I love history too. Oh, and I was no. like, oh, nice. Yeah, I was, yeah. She was like, just tell me more. She goes, tell me more about the colonial American history. I was like, oh, Benedict Arnold was misunderstood. And then I started talking to her about specifics of the Battle of Fort Ticonderoga. And this goes on for 35 minutes. And then she's like, that was amazing. She was like, can I have like $60 for my time? And I was like, what? I was like, no, I thought you wanted to know about history. I'm educating you. Yeah, she was like, no, a tip for my time. And then her name was Barbie. And she go, and I was like, what's your name? She said, Barbie. I was like, I was like, I'm just Ken. And she was like, what? She didn't get it? I was like, I'm just, and I was like, I'm just Ken from the movie Barbie. She was like, oh, that's right. I forgot they made a movie about Barbie. And I'm like, oh, it's insane. So I just gave her the $60 because I kind of like just felt bad for taking her time. But I yeah, was like, yeah, man, yeah. I got G'd at the strip club. I mean, that's a hilarious story. It was also the music blasting. So you're just yelling it. Yeah, over, it was over literally. Trey songs, R&B. Yes. Songs about fucking women. You're like, yeah, 1776. Yeah, yelling facts. And she seemed interested, but that's what strippers do. They seem interested. But they're not. Was she just like yes ending everything you said? Oh my god! Oh she no! Was like, wow! That's amazing. Crazy. Go she was on. like, I could tell like where well, a comic because comics have to be so smart. Yeah. And she was just like saying shit that she doesn't care about, and then she just got my money. But you know, just another woman that got my money. Did you uh, give her the sixty for the time? I gave her the sixty for the time. You're my manager man. said do not do that, and he like got involved. He was like get away from him. But I was like, you know what? Just give her the money because like, whatever. Um. So let me ask you a question, Trevor. Please. Um. How much do you weigh? 155. It should be a lot higher. What? Yeah. It's not Does that good. make you feel bad as a guy? It, yes. Yeah. Dude, when my pants size, when I look at it, it says 31. I was like, dude, I could get my ass beat by a strong gust of wind. I'm not happy about it. Why can't you put on weight? What happened? Who got felt canceled? No, no, no. 
Oh, um, um, she was just, she had a, Vanity and Vito had faces on like, uh, <laughs> I, okay. I, used to, I used to be heavier. In, in college, I was taking creatine, a little bit of tea booster. I was working out as a puffy boy, dude. Yeah. I, yeah. Do we have any from, old pics of Trevor? Do you have any old pics of you when you were puffed up? I could find one. Yeah, I want to get puffed up. Yeah. Type in Trevor Wallace uh, puff. puff. Yeah. Trevor <laughs> Wallace Page puff. does not exist. Yes. Uh, I have a, uh, my, my first headshot I got is, is kind of wow. funny. Wow. No, then none of these. No, I want to see Trevor Wallace jacked up. Yeah. So, so are, what are you trying to actively do now to gain weight? Nothing. You you want to be you want to no be, no 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 I just don't have time for it but I want to be let me show you my first headshot do you eat like shit I just don't eat a lot I don't eat enough do you not have an appetite no I'm hungry I'm fucking starving right now it's just timing like I wish I could just take a pill that just had like thirty grams of protein I can just shut the fuck up for the day Soylent. Is that a thing? Yeah, Soylent. It's like a meal replacement thing that you could just pound, and it's like 300 calories. It has protein and shit in it. Soylent and Soylent. It's, Hit them up. Is it a the pill? Pod. No, it's a, it's a drink. It's a drink. But, you just, but what's the difference between Soylent and a protein? Is it like it's like a Slim Fast? You no, know those? It's a pure meal replacement. Really? Yeah. Dude, I'm about to start fucking butt chugging these boys. That's how I got this big. Really? Yes. Nah. <laughs> Dude, I here's the thing. I just like I, I don't know. I literally just wake up and just try to figure out my day and just start working and then just like and then it's like 2 a.m. already. Really? So it's like my meals is like I'll eat at like 10 and then like 6 p.m. and then I just forget. Right. And then you don't do, Yeah, so, so you automatically intermittent fast. You don't even realize yeah. it. Yeah. You're going 20 hours without eating. Holy shit. But in the eating windows, you're not really eating anything. You're that not way. eating like food of sustenance, you say. You're not eating like healthy in there. It's okay. It could Times. be better. Yeah, we got a podcast sponsor that was like, the, the, they just send you like pre-made meals. And I was like, I guess this is me now. Right, right, right. You know, so I just, just chug those. Let me see if I can find this this photo. Of me. Yeah, let me see. First, so this is my first headshot ever. Uh, senior year, it was a, uh, my film class program. A little beefier. A little beefier. A little, little fatter in the face. Yeah, a little fat. Yeah. We can send that through. Yeah. I, I definitely have like photos of me like, quote, like me thinking I'm jacked. Right, I want to see if I can. Because you it. could put on muscle quick, because you have a you have a, a a skinnier frame. I get fat, you know. Really? I, yeah, but is it like a buff fat? No, I I feel puffy. Really? I don't know. I'm the one of those people where people like I've lost close to forty pounds, and some people are like I don't see it. Really? Yeah. Some people are like you always you uh, what? I thought that you were in shape last year. I'm like no. I mean I was. I'm, I was a fat piece of shit. I look like a fucking Philly cheesesteak. No, I feel like because because even that even that video you just showed where we we're at your old Staten Island house is like it's still very much you. It's never like it's like what what's I was going a on here. Piece of shit. You've had the same hair, same style, same is jawline. Just added a little bit of a uh, bumper car material on there. Speaking of hairs and jawlines, look at this. You just threw out the first pitch at City Field. Oh oh oh, oh 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 oh. Let's throw out. Let's oh, see wait. Trevor Wallace throwing out the first pitch at City Field. It's not good. Okay, because then I also threw it oh, out. Oh, please, I please. Threw out, I brought my daughter because I knew I wasn't going to. I brought my out. whole family. You brought them out with you onto so the field? So my parents were already just out here for <clears throat> my mom's birthday. See, this is what I should have done. I brought my daughter, and the key is I didn't go onto the mound. Yes. I stepped in front of the mound. But look at this. Look That's at what this everybody first says. strike like George Bush on 9-11. Look at <laughs> <the> shit. <laughs> oh, see. <laughs> Bang. Yeah, and that, great. And that's my boy, Pat Finnegan, who, right uh, who the was the catcher. Yeah, I got it. See, I showed up there, and they didn't tell me that I had to bring a catcher. And they're like, who's catching? I was like, isn't it a mascot or somebody, somebody from your team? Uh, so I had my manager, Mr. Andy Farrick, great guy. Shout out Aaron. Uh, he's like, I'll do it. And then, like, last second. So I throw it, and then it gets right below his glove, and it was, it's not great. Does your manager do Quaaludes at Skankfest? Mm, no. He was here this weekend. We different. Um, Damn, your manager did? <laughs> no. Um, look yeah, at, so that, that's the photo. Look at Trevor. Yo, you look photo, good at this photo, dude. That's what I'm saying. It looks like I'm revisiting, like, they're like, oh, all right, our old alumni, Matt's 2019. Did anybody cheer? No. Well, you know, when well, I walked out, yes. When I walked out, I was like, yeah, but here's the thing. The ball hit the plate, bounced it. Yes. Philly fans started booing. Yeah. Philly fans are not happy people not happy. at heart. I bounced. You also did Philly, right? I you threw out a Philly? Philly? No, I think they were playing Philly when you did it two years ago. Did they? Ago. Oh, they were. I'm, I'm a younger version of you. Dude, I did it on Hispanic, uh, Hispanic Heritage Night. Really? They literally that, picked I th me. I think this week was, or this month. Yeah. Dude, I love that the Mets keep picking white guys to throw out the first pitch during his well, Also, Heritage were you the night. only were you the only guy that threw a first pitch that night? No, it was one of like five of them. Yeah, so, I had no idea. I thought I had this whole moment. No. Meanwhile, my my pitch is shit. The girl after me, she's like the number one cricket player in the UK, beams one down. Of course. 
Yeah. Izzy Wong, she's working on throwing eight and hurling 80. She's like the, you, she's like a phenom. You know. Yeah. Dude, she went after me, beamed it down the middle. It Like, the guy came out with a fucking catcher's mitt and a catcher's mask. She's touring the states right now, like, talking to pitchers and baseball players, trying to get up to 80 miles per hour, because she's, like, currently around, like, really? 76, 80. Really? Is her pitch online? It's a good one. She Can she possibly make the major like, leagues? Uh, she, she plays professional cricket in Britain, but she's working on, like... And she's, she's got a great haircut. Better than mine. Good well, fade. see that. Nice taper. Lesbian, Pull, we think? Uh, we know. Okay. Yeah, she she cranks one. She was there with her uh, her partner, woman, lady, nice lady. Um, so beams it down the middle. Mine was shit. We can show you. It's not good. But the Mets but I, posted about it. Yeah. I mean, it's, Vito. it's all clout here. They're yeah. like, yeah, you post, I post. <laughs> yeah, also, I've never looked better in my life doing that. Like, I look like I know what I'm doing in that. A couple of these, eh, to the fans. Yeah. Vote for me. Now, here's the question, and just be honest with us. Did you stay for all nine innings? No. Of the Mets? <laughs> no. I, I stayed until about the the third or fourth. And then you got the hell out of there. Yeah, but some guy was like, come into my suite, and his dick was out. It was crazy. Dude, well, but, dude, uh, I was going to say, if you took the train one or two stops down Roosevelt Avenue, open air prostitution Going really? on, yes, sir. Yeah, it's a nice area. They are selling mufflers on the corner. Hundred percent, a good incentive to go to Mets games. You can go take two stops and get some toots. <laughs> <laughs> KiwiCo. This is a thing, a product that I ultimately. Sorry, he was trying. KiwiCo. I love this product. I use it with my kids. This is the best way to get your kids off their devices and get them interacting with you, interacting with each other, using their hands, using their brains. KiwiCo, I cannot endorse this product anymore. I love it. I love KiwiCo so much. It is the best product, I think, on the market because I love my kids so much, and this is what this is what they wait for. They genuinely get excited. They don't care when I come home. They just want the KiwiCo, the KiwiCo box at the door. So, KiwiCo, it delivers seriously fun, hands-on projects that inspire a lifelong love for learning. KiwiCo projects spark creative confidence for ongoing tinkering and experimentation. Listen, you could buy a robot, but isn't it way better to build your own? It gives the kids, it gave my stepson so much confidence to build his own robot. And I don't know what he does with that thing in his room now, but it is... It's been beaten up a little bit, but it's still in good condition. And he built it himself and he feels connected to it. And that's okay. <laughs> KiwiCo offers gifts with rich activities for all ages and interests. You give your child the tools to learn new skills, build new experiences, and make new connections to the broader world. Like the other day, Delilah made, my daughter made um, this type of uh, uh, like, like putty, but from scratch. And she was playing with it and loving it. And then my two-year-old threw it out the window. So there's a fight going on right now between my two-year-old and my eight-year-old. And my eight-year-old said, I'm going to throw you out the window to my, to my two-year-old. And I said, I cannot allow that. Unfortunately, I cannot allow that. I know that we, but the beauty about KiwiCo is they have other projects or they'll just send you one. That I, I hit up KiwiCo. I was like, this is what happened. They just sent me, uh, they sent me another um, putty making kit, which I really liked. And um, KiwiCo projects are designed by a team of educators, makers, engineers, and rocket scientists who brain, brainstorm hundreds of ideas to create the most exciting, age-appropriate, and educational projects. Real engineering, science, and art projects with high-quality materials. It's awesome. Get your first month free on any crate line at kiwico.com slash chaos. That's your first month free at kiwico.com slash chaos. Go do it. I love KiwiCo. I'm Chrissy KiwiCo. Trevor Wallace. Yeah, I, I liked it. I thought it was I thought it was a great experience. Will I ever do it again? No. No. I just I didn't I thought I was gonna be the only guy pitching. And so right. I have a little more time. They're like, all right, you're on, go, 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 go. They rush to me and I was and it I was, is demoralizing when you get to do something like a first pitch and you realize that again yeah you're just one one of five yeah nobody cares the thing is and we've spoken about this before the thing is about even being insanely famous like a taylor swift right taylor swift was at the jets game the other night you yeah. know jets chief Seems a little lower class for her you right know? dating travis kelsey all that stuff but even somebody as Taylor Swift, who I would say right now currently is probably the most famous human being on the planet, or at least certainly in America, Trevor Wallace, uh, um, uh, Taylor Swift. You're my Taylor Swift. Thank you so much. Taylor Swift. Even her life is insanity. We can't even comprehend what's going on in her life. But it's only that way for a couple of hours of her life. The rest of her day 
is just like ours. She's I brushing her teeth. think about that. What is she doing Tuesday at you know, 11 a.m.? Well, she might have moments where she's doing you know, crazy stuff, but I'm of saying course. the majority of, she's sleeping, she's falling asleep to a show, she's brushing her teeth, she's making breakfast, she's doing all these things. I was like, it's so like everybody else, yeah. but it's just what, what makes your life stand out is these moments and these little moments in time. But if, Like those. Like those. But if you took her life and compared it to someone who's extremely ordinary, she would only have like a couple of more hours of extraordinary life things happening each day. Yeah, but day. her extraordinary is also like MSG, you know? Right. But I, I do agree. I always think about what are they, just the off time. Everybody's scrolling the same TikTok algorithm. Yeah. Not, you know, but it's like they, she's watching the same shit. She's watching a guy in prison make top ramen burritos. Yeah. Yeah, if, if you ever get an opportunity, or I'm sure you have, like, you know, get opportunities to, like, speak to, like, A-list celebrities, they all, like, listen to podcasts. Yeah. They all know Crazy. what's going on. Yeah, you yeah. think they don't, but they just, they're not going to comment. Well, they're not going to post on their story, be like, great episode, Chrissy. You know, like, no, they're, they're, they're not they're, do they're, they watch from afar. A lot yeah. of them, and a lot of them love, like, guys like you and Tim Dillon, who's saying wild shit. It's like, but they love it so much because they can't say anything like that. Right. You're, like, their voice of reason. Right. Right. Did you see the video yesterday of all the people in front of Taylor Swift's New York uh, place? There's like pop rots. There's like uh, there's her cars pulling out. And there's people wall to wall just lined up waiting for her to leave. So her house is just everybody knows where she lives in New York. It's kind of interesting. I will say too. It, I know people know. I mean, and I would. If, I, if you got a video, I, I mean, if you maybe, try to get it, we I mean, saw her. Remember, we passed when she was leaving her studio. When she was dating my man Matty Healy, and we saw her leaving the studio, and there was like a yeah, few hundred a people great, standing outside. No, it. it's. But what is crazy about what is like the place we're at in society, which I guess is fun. But like this morning I was watching the news and it's like they literally they're, they're, they're you know, like what they do, like before they go to the news, they're like coming up in the next hour or whatever. They're like um, they're like, OK, you know, we got, you know, uh, uh, Taylor Swift and, you know, uh, Travis Kelsey news and, the you know, whatever, you know, Taylor Swift's coming up. And then they said and we're, there's also a, a nine year old girl who's missing who went missing from a campsite. Oh in utah and then they're like and they say that and then they're like but big news of the day taylor swift travis kelsey oh my god and like they go for 20 minutes on that and then they talk about the nine-year-old girl and i'm like i know that this is just life and the media and what it is but i'm like that doesn't mean that it's right i'm like why isn't everyone focused on the nine-year-old girl U usa today just hired a full-time taylor swift reporter Yes. That's yeah. crazy. Which, I, by the way, I'm not saying like, good, she's, we we admire celebrity in this country. And I, I, I Taylor Swift is great. I, I'm not taking anything away from her, but I'm just saying, you know, the news, it's like, I, I kind of felt like a certain way about that. I was like, shouldn't we open, definitely let's talk about Taylor Swift all day, but shouldn't we open the show with the nine-year-old girl who's missing and try to find her? Uh, but I don't know, or ask Taylor Swift if she can find her. I, I, I don't, I don't well, know. We just got to figure out the set list of news. They, yes. they got to find because they, they're coming in with with headlining and, and closer bits, but then they're throwing in the, some some stuff that's a little darker and a little like more real. They just got to work out the way they can workshop a little bit. Now we got to ask Vanitia the the million dollar question: Is Travis Kelsey Taylor Swift's boyfriend a fuck boy? Of course. No. No? He's I, hot and we love him. I think he's a mama's boy and he's gonna treat her right. So he's and he's hot. Oh, he's gorgeous. I he's love, gorgeous him. I love, love a him. mustache. I love a mustache. He's a good Midwest guy, I feel. Yeah. Where's he from originally? I don't know. Uh, probably. But he's Matt Healy, who I love, nice, amazing, right? Oh, you don't need, you don't, I, no, we're, I, I we're saw, the biggest 1975 I fans love him. here. Tell, tell me. <laughs> I, I, I went on a date with a girl and she goes, I'm talking about touring and this and that because I'm conceited and that's all I care about is my life. And she goes, oh yeah, my ex used to be a musician. Um, uh, he toured a lot. I was like, oh really? Yeah. Well, what would I know him? She goes, do you know the 1975? I was like, yeah, I think pretty much everybody who's born knows the night. And she goes, yeah. I was like, would you date a Maddie Healy? She's like, yeah, you know him. I was like, don't play this you know oh him game. Oh, my God. But that's dating in Los Angeles, the you know him? Yes. Immediately, He's my wallpaper. Immediately, I would have been like, let me smell your breath. I want to see if any of his I made love left. to him. Yes. I would love to smell her breath to see if Maddie, if there's a hint of Maddie's penis. I can't tell you. Maddie, the 1975, I've, we've never really met another comic who loves them like I we love, love their music. No. Dude, that's just, all I listen it's to. It's good background. You just feel like you're doing something. Dude, they're going, they literally, they're going to be performing in Madison Square Garden. I believe it's November 15th. And then Kids Bop, who my children love, 
offered me to take my girl and my kids to see Kids Bop live at Beacon Theater, but it's also November 15th. I said, we can't do it because daddy's going to go see that. is your So you Kids can watch Bob. Kids Bop on YouTube. They're just doing covers. Who cares? Bunch of hacks. There's They're like, no oh, material. My daughter said my wish is I would love to meet Kids Bop. I'm like, well, unfortunately, they're performing on the same day as 1975, so you're going to have to stay home and watch that shit with grandma on her phone. <laughs> What's your favorite song from them? I don't, I just, let me see. <laughs> There's so many. The thing is with the 1975 is sometimes you don't even know the song titles. You just know the movie. What's the one that the intro is, is like? Oh God. Dude, Dude. Chocolate? No, no, and it's not chocolate. It's it's not love. It was not with yo. It's not, if it's if, if it's not love. Um, um, uh, um, the intro. They always play. He always says something crazy, and then the band cuts him off in the in the concerts with that song. Right. I think it's if it's it, it, if it's it, not it, love. if it's not love. It's not love if it's not with you. That's the name of the song. Yeah, yeah, that's from there. That's from the album, like 2006, 15, 16, something like that. Um, I wonder if he cares, Maddie Healy, about this, about Travis Kelsey dating well, Taylor. You have to, it has, you have to think about it. That clip of you went pretty big talking about them. Did they ever reach out, or did? Oh Maddie, yes, yeah, oh, yes, Maddie. Yeah, they, they they reached out, and then we we were talking. We were supposed to. I was supposed to meet them at the after party at SNL. Yeah, I met I met with uh, Ross, uh, who's in their band, who's an amazing guy. Um, and then uh, Maddie didn't sh Maddie didn't come because he was uh, he was dating Taylor Swift and they said cool. and it wasn't even public back then mm -hmm. but they said at the after party like oh Maddie's got like a girl you'll hear about it but like we can't tell you who it is but she's like world famous so he's he was spending time with her um, and then we were supposed to he was supposed to come on the podcast oh, the awesome. next day and then he was like oh I got to do jujitsu or something like that so he come I on love the podcast that. Yeah, he did. yeah I yeah, love yeah. that something like anything that. with jujitsu <laughs> yeah, God you break yeah. my heart in half so, so I did a show in L A and one of the producers was like oh yeah he's in the in the crowd and Maddie Healy was in the crowd Maddie Healy was in the crowd for At one the, of your shows the comedy store yeah. So what the fuck? But but here's the thing. I, I went up like second or third. It's comedy store. There's like 12 people on it. And he's like, wait around. You go and say what's up to him after. I'm like, fuck yeah. I wait around the whole time, just sitting there, just simping it out for my boy Maddie. And then at the very end, I see the guy who's producing the show. He goes, Oh yeah, I think he left. And I was like, well, yeah, huh? So and then I When was this? Maybe six months ago, six, seven fuck. months ago. Damn, uh, did you have a good set too? It was it was good. I would have done my all my aim like you can't like roll the shit out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're hitting the classics. Fucking shit. But when, yeah. is my, when am I gonna meet Maddie? Oh, yeah. When am I gonna meet? I've never met him. So never, who reached out? Just somebody from their no, team? No, he reached out, but we never physically met. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I think the only just, way I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have to start taking Just throw a Winston in the air and he'll just appear. Yeah. I know some people hate on him now. There's like <laughs> really on social media, right? There's like people that are like anti Maddie Healy now because of I guess because I guess because the Swifties, I guess Taylor Swift fans. I don't know. Well, that's kind of the way you do. You pop in, you date Taylor Swift for a little, and then you fuck off. You know? Yo, know, because because the thing is, when you that's all part of like good marketing too, where it's like date Taylor Swift, you the band gets huge, you get huge, your music is already fast, uh -huh. uh, fantastic. Let me see what other 1975 songs we got in here. I know yeah, you go dude, here. I got them all. I'll start singing. The sound great. The somebody sound. else. Somebody else. When I went through a breakup, somebody else. Fuck! That song would just jerk my heart off into emotions. Oh, with Ice Spice. What a random sentence that is. That's a beef with Ice Spice. Maddie Healy, a beef with Ice Spice. That should be the name of this episode, Beef with Ice Spice. That is the most Snapchat news headline I've ever seen Maddie Healy, why he's problematic. If you're saying someone's problematic, just shut up, dude. If you're a problematic, shut up. Everybody's problematic. Would you know Ice Spice's real name? Melissa You're not going to like it. What ISIS. Is it? It's her actual real name, ISIS? Yes, it is. There it is. I-S-I-S. I, -S -S. I would pronounce it is, is if I was her. She's uh, a nice lady, though. Are you going to... When's the last time you had sex? Uh, two weeks ago. Rubby? Put on a rubby ducky? No. Ooh, Dog did up. But, but I recently got tested across the board, and your boy is good. Negative. Yeah, I thought um, I had an STD. I was in Miami for a week. My dick was not feeling okay. Dipped nice. in paprika. Was Came she back? And, and what was that? Was she a lady of the night? Was she a, uh, a woman you met at a show? She was a woman that I met in the direct messages. Puerto no. Rican chick. There it is. I'm baby. really a young Chrissy uh -oh, D out here. My girl was in Miami two weeks ago too. Uh oh, <laughs> Mr. Thrill Five, yo. Uh, my kid's gonna have a new stepdaddy. <laughs> um, <laughs> great hair across. Great hair across the board. <laughs> um, so yeah, the DMs, the DMs will get you. The DMs are a, can be a dating app 
uh, at time. And the DM. But Isn't he, that interesting? This is a bunch of people being like, hey, make more videos like this. Just shut up. You're annoying. Yeah. Trying to fuck. Trying to fuck. I know. <laughs> I got off. That's IG. all from the same guy, by the way. I had somebody else uh, running my IG, but I did. Oh, log, really? But I did recently log Smart. back in. To have it just to see like if I was over, if I could handle it. Oh, and yeah. uh, I was on it for about three hours and almost ruined my life. So I was like, let's go back. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Sign out. What if the guy running your Instagram was just sending horny DMs? I ho- I, I'm sure he is. So you don't, you're not on any social media and you read now? No, I, but, but I, I'm not, but like it, it, my guy will show me like if there's messages that are like important or whatever. Gotcha. He, oh, he's, he's very good at like showing me like comments or whatever. He's like, this is, so we, we run it together. But yeah, I don't, um, I don't, uh, uh, you know, get on it. What did Manny Healy say about chubby Chinese chicks? That, I think that's what he said about Ice Spice, right? Oh, he, he called Ice Spice a chubby Chinese lady. With Nick Mullen on the Nick Mullen podcast. It's fine. Yeah, that podcast is great. Nick Mullen's, uh, um, what, what is it? The Adam Friedland show. Yeah, great. Exactly. Yeah, good. Who cares? It's like, yeah, you know, people are going to be people. Fucking, Ma- I'm Matty Healy, ride or die. I don't care what he says. I literally couldn't care less. If he named his next album Fuck Chris Stefano, I'd buy 10 copies. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. All right, Trevor, where can people see you? Uh, you can see me, TrevorWallsComedy.com, uh, for any upcoming tour dates. But just check out the special on Amazon. It's called Pterodactyl. Trevor Walls, Pterodactyl. Thank you so much for having me, man. Uh, this is awesome. You're one of my favorites, and I love watching you. And congratulations on Radio City Hall. Uh, love you, Trevor. <laughs> <laughs>